views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey there, time for the Bronx Buzz, and this is our holiday show, and um, we're going <laughs> to spend the whole show with the Bronx Times reporter. Uh, we've got uh, not only a reporter, but also uh, the uh, photo editor and photo assignment editor, and he's brought some great photos. But we're going to start off because we want to prove that not only Santa Claus is coming to town, Santa Claus has come to town, and that is in, in, the, in the body of Alex Mitchell. Happy holidays to you, Alex. Nice to have you. Happy holidays to you, Gary. Thank you for having me on. Um, you have been at the Bronx Times for how long? Coming up on a year, January a year. 25th. So here we are. This is your first year in the Bronx covering the Bronx. And so far, and now listen, this isn't the big dress-up show, but this is the second time this year that you've come dressed up. And Third, I, I believe. It. Third? Two well, Yankees jerseys. You, that's right. You wore the Yankee jersey twice because they were in the playoffs. He was rubbing it in and whatever. And they will be next year. We will. Uh, that's why we're going to find out. We, that's why we play the games. Nonetheless, Alex, nice to see you. Nice to have you with us. Um, uh, and, and really, congratulations on what I think is a great year. You are an emerging uh, journalist in the Bronx, and you're covering some amazing stuff. So before we even get started, thank you for everything you've been doing. Not only for being on the show, but also doing real good work in the box. Thank you, Gary. Um, one of the stories that you, and, and you were excited about it, and you said, Gary, I want to talk about it, was this idea on Author Avenue and kind of a Christmas thing on Author Avenue. Lay it out. What are we writing about? What are we talking about? Yes, this was uh, an original idea by me. And um, as you know, I love food, I love pizza, and pretty much anything Italian. So I came up with the idea hey, where's there better on Christmas than Arthur Avenue? I grew up in a very Italian family, and we did the Seven Fishes. We did all that fun a whole stuff. Bit. And well, we're really, where else other than Arthur Avenue in the borough of the Bronx? Exactly. Yeah. So I thought, let's go do a story on this. Let's do a photo-intense story showing all the places where you get the ravioli, the manicotti, the everything, the fish, the meat, the pork. And I ran into a woman named Danielle Oteri, who runs a tour of Arthur Avenue. And um, she and her family have been there since, since before World War I doing these. Well, they weren't doing the tour. She started it. But her family right. has had a deep-rooted history there. And she wants to pass it on. I give her a call. And all of a sudden, hey, we're doing a story on this. And she gives me the tour. So, and she gave you the tour. And yeah. you did the story around the tour. Um, before I ask you more detail, I'm just going to say uh, we're coming up on Christmas weekend. If you go to Arthur Avenue right now and <laughs> Friday and maybe even Saturday and, and Sunday, it's it's packed. It's 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 one of the most fun places to be. It's one of the busiest places to be. The Belmont Market has never looked better than it looks right now. It's beautiful. And, and so anyway, so I'm, I'm making the sale. If you want to go out there, you may wait online for a couple of things. But that's where you get the best of. So now the question is, what really blew you away, made you excited about this tour, aside from the things that we kind of already know about? So a couple of the places that I uh, held personally in my heart that were delicious, Joe's Italian Deli. Really? Where is Joe's? Joe's is 187th. It's a little bit closer to, to the zoo. Oh, so up, it's further down. It's when I say Arthur Avenue, you know, I'm talking yeah, about, they're about an the area. so we talk the Belmont neighborhood. Okay, I did. I I had never been to it's Joe's Deli. It's the best uh, mozzarella. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna mark it down. You have to. You really? Have to. It's the best mozzarella, or as my people say, mozzarella. Of course. That you're ever gonna have. Really? It's an Italian old school, you know, sort of. So if you go, I, I, I'm going to tell everybody where it is. So if you go toward the zoo from, let's say, Arthur Avenue on 187th. How like how many blocks from the zoo is it, it before you get the It's further into? past Hughes. Um, okay. It's it's about in halfway. About halfway. Right, uh, going th in that direction, right side or left side? So this is like a travel log <laughs> here. We're so say you're uh, say you're by Full Moon, you right. would go to the left on that street. 
Right. So, and then down two or three blocks, you pass the church, you All pass right. uh, Our Lady of Carmel. Now, so. now I know. I don't believe I'm going to go this weekend, but we are gonna, I'm, I'm going to take you up on that. So that was one place. Now, did you try food at each one of the different places? What do you think? <laughs> the man comes in a Santa hat. Don't ask a stupid question. That's, that's really the rule. I'm jolly and I like food. What can right, I say? There you go. So you really got to taste and, and do all that stuff. And by the way, the, now, is the article in this current uh, print edition? No, comes I've out seen it tomorrow. online. Oh, it comes out tomorrow, so we're shooting Thursday, so Friday you'll be able to yes, see it online. Yes, tomorrow. Or it's online now. I made sure that we got that up with as much time before Christmas as possible. Right. Tomorrow it comes out in the newspaper. There you go. All right, so that was one thing you did. Now we're, now we're going to do a little more food because Alex had told us he's getting a kind of a food specialty over there. At yes, the, at the I am. Um, talk to me about Tyshawn Jones. I thought this was a real fun story. This is, uh, I'm going to tell part of it. He's a skateboarder. He's a, a world champion. Skater of the year. Skate, uh, skateboarder, skater of the year. And now he's in the food business. Yes. He, um, he opened a place in Soundview. It's a little takeout Caribbean American joint called Tastes So Good make you want to smack your mama. <laughs> now, for anyone who doesn't know, that is a reference from Friday After Next, one of the better films of our time. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> because we certainly wouldn't want anybody to serve it. No, 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 don't. During the holiday time to take nope, that literally. Nope, that'll put you on the naughty list. That's right. So, so he opens this place. He's only 19 years old. He started skating. He actually started skating in Throg's Neck when he was 13. And he opens Tastes So Good as a backup in case skating doesn't work out. He just wants to have a contingency. Then he gets named Skater of the Year. Now he has the restaurant. Now he has the skating title. Now, is he, is he a chef? Is he a food guy? Or is he just kind of, well, uh, you know, I kind of like the idea. So he's a food guy, and he loves cooking, but he's not the chef in the restaurant. His, ironically enough, his mom helps him out a lot with it, Tamisha. And, uh, well, happily, he doesn't uh, want to smack no. his mom. No, she, she <laughs> seemed in good spirits when I met her, so All right, fair enough. I don't think any smacking was going on. And, and you got to meet him? I got to meet him. Nice I guy? got to talk to him. Very nice kid. Right. And he seems like he's going somewhere. He's very motivated, very passionate about what he does. And, and i got to ask you, aside from the food, um, and, and did you get to watch him skate? I mean, I've seen some of his videos. He's unbelievable. It's like, it's like the skateboard is like scotch tape to his, his feet. It's He's amazing. It is unbelievable. He was actually, he was wearing boots when we did the interview, and uh, he said that's a cardinal rule. You can't oh, skate so you did, so you while didn't wearing get to boots. See him. All right, but enough. I did get to see him hop over a, um, a subway uh, entrance, which was pretty exciting. Really? I saw a video of it. and I've seen the video. So, folks, look up Tyson Jones and the name of the restaurant. Uh, and, and where is it? It's in Soundview. This is on Lafayette Avenue in okay. Soundview. And, and what's the name of the restaurant? Tastes so good. Tastes so good. Okay. Make you want to smack your mama. That, oh, that's actually the name that's of the, the restaurant. That's the name of oh, the I restaurant. Didn't get that. I don't get that. I don't know if I'm bringing my mom there. I don't. don't. <laughs> Take out. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Listen, let's get to um, uh, maybe a more serious thing. Um, there, there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen with the Metro North um, yeah. stations, plural, in the borough of the Bronx. And um, I, I guess uh, one of the issues is... The, you know, with all the talk and all the planning, um, uh, Metro North doesn't have the rights to use the, the track lines, yeah. the rail lines from Amtrak. Uh, where are we at? What's, what's going on? So, actually, uh, Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. tomorrow will be holding an important press conference in the Hutch Metro Center at the Marriott talking about where they've gotten in progress. But last week, he actually, also wearing a Santa hat, went around the uh, mall at Bay Plaza collecting signatures to petition Amtrak to allow Metro North and the MTA to use the tracks. Right now they're stuck, or derailed, I should say, on a, <laughs> on a memorandum of <laughs> understanding, which would grant all the rights. And what MTA, or what Amtrak, I should say, they're asking the MTA to foot different bills for different Amtrak-owned bridges and track repair needed, like the Bronx sales they, they think it's, one. A, it's an easy mark to cut a deal. Yeah, it's okay, we'll give you the tracks, but you're going to fix this, then you're going to fix this, then that, and then that. And the MTA is willing to negotiate, but they're saying, come on. There's got to be a limit. Yeah, enough is enough. You know, it, it, 
Well, whatever. I, I suppose it's the corporate mentality that if you want something from us, we want something back. And, and so maybe I, I ought not to, you know, weigh in personally on it. But, you know, the opportunity for growth and development with these four stops, let's see, Van Ness, Park Chester, Co-op City, Hunts Point, and Morris Park. And Morris Park, Those yeah. are four of them. Uh, you know, the opportunities are just uh, extraordinary. Uh, one of the other things that I want to mention, and the assignment editor, Patrick uh, Rocchio, uh, it's actually the A1 story in the Bronx Times in the current edition, is um, the Hutch Metro Center. We, we shoot um, uh, the Bronx Buzz at m the Mercy College uh, BronxNet Studios at the Hutch Metro Center. And um, I guess that's part of the dialogue because if you fix the ramps around this area, people will be able to drive yeah. to, the, to the train station, and that's yet another benefit. So I'm glad you, you brought up 30 seconds. driving to the train station because what's not in the Metro North plan is parking, and that's what people want, that's what people need. Something that is coming to the Morris Park one, though, is a connecting bridge between the station and the Hutch Metro. That, that is good to know, and, and using uh, the ferry stop at Classen Point as an example, there's no parking yep. there, and I understand the ferry is a tremendous convenience, but it's a limited convenience because there's no park. I mean, I've, I've been there, and you got to park who knows where and either walk or get a cab or an Uber or whatever to get to the, yeah. to the uh, thing. Anyway, happy holiday, my friend. I hope you have a great holiday. I hope you don't eat too much, but you eat well. No problem. And um, I'm not looking forward to having you come back with that hat. I don't think that hat is. Oh, no. Next know. time I'll be wearing a different hat. Uh, don't worry. Fair. <laughs> Fair enough. Alex Mitchell, he's really doing an amazing job at the Bronx Times. Speaking of the Bronx Times, we're going to bring in our buddy uh, who is the photo editor and photo assignment editor, Robert Worsing, and he's got some fantastic photos of the year to show us uh, right after you take a short break. Don't go away. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma, too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. from Vivo's Do It Your Selfie, where we recreate the hottest looks from today's biggest music videos. After cleaning out our closet, we have a lot of clothes we don't wear anymore. Like this old t-shirt. It's not garbage, it's actually a brand new rug. And to make it, all you need to do is cut, tie, and glue. Cut the t-shirt into strips. Tie the strips into knots. And glue the knots to the bath mat. I love it. Give your garbage another life. And recycle.
Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. I am really enjoying my time with Alex and now with my buddy Robert Worsing. Nice to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me, Gary. Robert is the photo editor. I call him photo assignment editor, but you really deal with all the photos. One of the things that really characterizes the Bronx Times is not only are there news and stories, and of course everybody has a little photo on the side, but you really spend a lot of time using photographs to tell stories. In other words, you can't be at every event, so you get a photo and you write a little caption, right? It, it really characterizes the paper. Exactly. It's like the old saying goes, a picture's worth a thousand words, and that's really like what we try to do. Like mm -hmm. We try to tell the story uh, visually through the photo. And one of the things, listen, I know through the years that really identifies uh, the paper, you, rep you put people in there. So some of the photos are not, you know, great, glorious, the perfect photo, but they're photo ops, and people are really happy to see themselves, see their leaders, see their community, see their school groups, all that kind of stuff. Um, are there um, specific types of photos that you look for more than other photos? Hmm. Well, it depends on the event. Like if it's like something more community based, we usually try to look for uh, like a lot of residents, like within. Uh, the community like celebrating like so for example yeah, and you want like to put as many party. in there yeah like if it's like a block party we want to get like the whole family there and show like uh, all the different generations having fun like the little kids and even like the elders having fun mm -hmm. so in, in we just had a, a dialogue just before we went on the air in your process of selecting the photos we were going to choose in your mind what was the criterion because these by the way these are not photo op photos. These are gorgeous photos. Thank what, you. What was your, um, what was, like, what were you thinking about? Just tell me. Um, sure. So when I was uh, going through my mind, I was just trying to think, like, what were some of the best photos, like, throughout the year? And, like, what did they, like, best symbolize, like, uh, like throughout the year, like the different seasons or perhaps like some like landmark events or maybe like something that just like popped up like instantly and we had to like cover or like address like major issues. Like there are actually some photos that will address major issues in there. So it was really a combination of the artist, the artistry, so to speak, mm -hmm. as well as the significance of the photo. Um, you work with about how many different photographers? Uh, currently 11, actually. 11? That's amazing. Yeah. And because I guess they work in freelance and you assign them, do you, mm -hmm. do you have one a day or do you, sometimes you have more than one out there? Every day? Um, usually there's like more than one, I would say, or sometimes like there will be one photographer who might go like from one thing to another event, um, kind of like I back see. to back. Right, right. Um, well, listen, um, it's great. Are, we, are, we, are you ready? I'm ready, ready. Yeah. ready. Are we ready? And then we're going to show some pictures. What do we got? Let's show some. These are from the Bronx Times 2018, a little perspective about the Bronx. Uh, we're about to, are we putting it up on here? Can we do that? Uh, here we go. Oh. All right, who's this? Rock and roll yeah. in the Bronx. Yeah, so um, this is a, a picture of the band Left in the Attic. and this Left was, in the Attic? Yes. And um, this was actually taken at the very first um, show for the Bronx Underground, which actually returned after a three-year hiatus. Right. Um, and that was all brought about thanks to uh, the Fox and King, Inc. They helped bring back this uh, music scene, which was gone for three years. Right. So that's the significance of it. I do like the intensity of it. Um, can we credit the photographer who took the, the pictures? Oh, sure. Um, so this was taken by Aracelis Batista. Right. Um, and this was taken um, actually at the very first show. And what I like about this particular photo is just um, a lot of like the energy you feel from the performance. I use the word intensity, mm -hmm. same kind of thing. There, there is intensity uh, in there. And do we know about what time of year it was? I, I um, don't want to put you on the spot. Let's see. This was about, I would say, like September. Okay, so in the fall. Mm -hmm. All right, drum roll for the next one. What do we got? We got something good for the next? These are Bronx Times news photos, but really photos that really characterize oh. the Bronx. This is great. Oh, Look so at this photo. This one is uh, the City Island Blessing of the Fleet, which happens every year. And um, this was taken um, during the Blessing of the Fleet ceremony. Blessing where, of the Fleet. Mm -hmm. And um, right there, that um, ship in the background is actually like an FDNY ship, and it's just like shooting like all the water, which I thought was like really nice. Like you have water all around and you even have water now flying in the air. It, you know, listen, even if you didn't say that it was part of a significant event, this it's just, it's a lovely, I, I hate to put it this way because here we are in the dead of December, but um, it's a refreshing photo. This, I'm, I'm going to presume, was the summertime. Yeah, this was, um, I would say the summertime, like maybe like midsummer. And um, so, now where are we looking at City Island? Or do we know where, or like on the bridge or something? It's hard I to believe see. this is uh, near like the Marina Dock. 
of City Island, Island. Dock, City Island. Oh, right, oh, right on the dock. Wow, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a tremendous photograph. It really is tremendous. How many uh, boats are in the water when when they do this thing? Um, usually uh, quite a few. Like I believe like about like five, maybe ten. Okay, that's not um, quite a few. Well, that's yeah, few. definitely more. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and uh, let's credit the photographer. Oh, sure. Who's the photographer? Um, so this was taken by Silvio Pacifico, Silvio. Uh, one of our veteran photographers. Yep. Um, and I, he did a great I have job. to say, I think uh, Silvio took my picture this year more than anybody, <laughs> more than even my wife with her cell phone. I can tell you. Yeah, he's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's just one of, one of all the photographers are great. I see them all over the place. We, by the way, we had Ed Watkins on the mm. show here uh, what last week or the week before. Tremendous photographer. All right, let's see what do we got. Oh, oh wow. the, I saw this one earlier before we came on the air. This is a very powerful photo. Yeah, so this was actually a very interesting photo. So our photographer, Miriam Quinn, um, she actually She's brought also this been on the show. Um, to our attention, the uh, Albanian American Open Hands Foundation um, on January 4th, Independence Day of this year, actually went around uh, Pelham, Bay, uh, Pelham Parkway and they fed the homeless. They uh, gave them pizza and water and just, you know, like really like, talk to them and made them feel home. Like what, home. what I like, what I love about this photo is the intensity of, um, uh, you know, the, the guy. And you mm. can, uh, I mean, he certainly looks like he's had his issues, so to speak. But the real subtlety of it is right at the foot of the, of the photo with the pizza <laughs> and even the paper towels. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of a story. You know, people need a chance to wash up and dry off and all that kind of stuff. It, it's just a tremendous, tremendous photograph. Um, we will, we will thank Miriam uh, when we see her for, uh, for taking this picture. What a great! And mm. where was that taken? Oh, so this was uh, Pelham Parkway, kind of near like the train station. So actually on Pelham Parkway. Yes. You know, it's uh, well, whatever. I, I mean, I'm always, as you know, a fan of the Bronx, and people wouldn't think of it as uh, as the Bronx or Pelham Parkway. You know. Great, great photo. Mm -hmm. well, and when did this uh, run? This also would have to be summer one. Would oh, think. Um, so this was actually uh, July 4th. On, oh, it was uh, July 4th? Uh, yeah. Oh, because that's when they do the, the charity. Yeah, and um, even the, the founder of the uh, organization, Alexandra uh, Nilaj, he was walking around wearing like a patriotic hat, like red, white, nice. and blue hat. And it was just very nice, like great. them all out there helping them. Let's go. Let's show some more. I want to get as many of these as we can. Oh, okay, so this is a photo taken by one of our newest photographers, Casey Rodriguez. And this is actually... Um, Casey is male or female? Uh, female. Okay. And um, this is actually an interesting one. She brought this to my attention because her friend is an artist, and her f artist friend actually created that uh, portrait right there. This is actually... Um, the person on screen isn't um, the artist herself. This is actually... Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I thought it was somebody who <laughs> who painted that picture, but no, it just happens to be a portrait. Just so it's a photo portrait of somebody who was painted. <laughs> indeed. And um, that's actually uh, the portrait of this woman right here. Right. And uh, what's really interesting is that the artist um, was given this photo and she just recreated it just with um, different art materials, even like just like different materials altogether. Like there's like some like little pieces of metal, plastic, just to make everything. Really? Yeah. Well, so it's not a flat painting, so to speak. No. Right, well, great. All right, we have more, right? There's a couple more mm -hmm. at least. Oh, wow, yeah. So this was a very powerful image. This is um, he, he, at the Hutch Metro Center? Yeah. Right here? Um, this happened, I believe, the summer, like maybe late summer. Our photographer, Edward uh, Edwin Soto, was out on the scene, and um, there was this um, emotionally disturbed man, he was threatening to uh, end his life by jumping off the building. However, the police were actually able to talk him out of it. Wow. Now, does he have, have something in his right hand? I, I can't really tell. It's a little hard to tell, but um, it looks like maybe he's like holding on to something, maybe like a string or maybe like it's just like kind of like the way the photo looks. And, and, and you also have to uh, capture the um, emotion, I suppose, uh, of the uh, of police officer on the right um, with his hands out. Mm. Another just tremendous photo. Now, these all ran in the newspaper, Yes, right? these all so ran on the newspaper and in our website. On the website. So, uh, you know, anybody who, you know, wants to uh, see any of the stuff like that on a regular basis, uh, just check out uh, bxtimes.com. All right, more? We got more? How many we got left? Let's see. 
Oh, okay. This is a happy little photo. <laughs> so this one was actually the 49 Precincts National Night Out in August. And um, this was taken by, I believe, Silvio Pacifico again. Um, and what I really find interesting about this photo is just you have the community and law enforcement together. And especially, you know, during this time where it seems that both are odds with each on other. On different pages, yeah. Um, it's really nice to see them come together. I got to tell you, I've, I've gone to a number of these um, uh, community affairs type events and they, they are great events. And, you know, I, I know that the media and whomever else talks and there are tensions between police and some of our neighborhoods. But when you get to these events, it's just mm. great. The cops are great. Uh, of course, you know, mm -hmm. and, and of course, community people appreciate it. There's no question. Great, great photo. How many more do we have? Do we have a couple more? Uh, Let's see. What do we got? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Look at this photo. <laughs> I love this photo. So this one was taken uh, by Silvio Pacifico, and this was at the Boo at the Zoo, at the Bronx Zoo, uh, which they do every year for Halloween. And, and that woman is not actually nine feet tall. <laughs> oh, no. Who took, Silvio took the picture? Silvio. And um, they're actually on stilts. Uh, and what's pretty cool is that you can't really tell because of the costumes. Right. And what I like about this particular photo is just the awe that the kid has in her face when she's looking at these Great. costumed characters. Tremendous. Uh, do we have time to fit one more in? One more? We, we have more than one more photo, but I want to get as many of these as we can. Yeah, I saw oh. this one. What is this? Oh, so this was taken during a community rally in the hub section of the Bronx, and um, they were trying to bring attention to a lot of the rampant drug use that's been taking uh. place at the pu in public. And inside this juice bottle right here, you see all the caps and the needles wow. that were used by... Um, and that people had picked up. Mm-hmm. And it just So, you really know, even though that. it's visually pleasing because of the colors, the significance of it is, is tremendous. Listen, yeah. Robert, uh, I, on this note, on this very note, we're going to say Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to you, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody out there in TV land. And, um, and we thank you and all our buddies, Laura thank you. And, and, and John and everybody at the Bronx Time, Patrick and everybody, uh, for just being with us. And we hope we're going to really have a great year in the Bronx in 2019. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it, folks. That's it. We're saying good night. Good night for everybody and um, peace and love in the Bronx in 2019. Let's not be shy about saying it and let's even be better about doing it. So uh, happy holidays. Happy New Year to everybody.